Um, thank you so much for having me today. Um, I am the stormwater program manager for Lower Allen Township. We are a first class municipality in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. It's in Cumberland County, um, if you're um, not sure where we are. And we have almost, I think the latest census is now, but we're a little over 20,000 residents in, our, in my municipality. So going to talk about how we went through the process of establishing a stormwater authority a stormwater program and a stormwater fee here in Lower Allen Township. So, early discussion. So we have a five member board of commissioners and they began discussion around the formation of our stormwater authority in the fall of 2017. Uh, during our budget season, they were preparing to uh, and trying to determine with our new uh, NPDES permit, what type of um, projects we'd be required to do as part of that uh, permit, in addition to our aging infrastructure and permit compliance and some capital projects we were planning. So they started this discussion on whether the general fund alone could um, be able to subsidize these projects or if we needed to establish a stormwater fee to have some guaranteed source of revenue for these projects. So. The, the um, board commissioners um, also took into account our pollution reduction plan that was required by our NPDES permit. That's, they estimated, we estimated the budget and budget that cost over $3.1 million um, to implement over a five year period. So their discussions uh, began in 2017 and um, the board of commissioners uh, eventually decided that we needed to establish a fee to um, subsidize some of these projects that we needed to accomplish in our uh, MS4 permit and just in general with our stormwater infrastructure that was in the ground. So if you don't know or already know, I'm sure you already know what Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System stands for, MS4. Our MS4 system consists of uh, almost uh, 111,000 uh, linear feet of storm water pipe. We have uh, over 101 storm water manholes, um, 89 outfalls, 634 inlets. We we have actually a little bit more than 130 BMPs now in our municipality. They're mostly private. Some are township uh, owned and over 60 miles of township roads. So some of the benefits of establishing our stormwater management program. Um, one of the main benefits would be uh, cleaner, cleaner streams. So all of our MS4 drains to uh, the Yellow Breaches watershed, and we have the Cedar Run Creek and the Yellow Breaches Creek. And developing this program and establishing a fee would enable us to help to clean up our stormwater runoff and make our, our streams cleaner and eventually the Chesapeake Bay cleaner. So that's one of the benefits. We would have improved recreational opportunities on those creeks and streams. Uh, with fishing, uh, kayaking, we have a lot of kayaking in our municipality, uh, canoeing, um, and and just hiking along those those uh, recreational areas. So we would improve those opportunities for our residents. Obviously, I already stated we would comply with our regulatory mandates, and we we have been uh, MS4 since 2004 here in Lower Island Township, um, and reduce flooding. Um, we are looking at several areas in our municipality where we have flooding issues and we're doing television and I'll talk about that a little, little bit later, but we're doing stormwater television um, flushing and potentially lining of pipes to gain capacity to help with flooding issues in our municipality. And we also, as part of our program, it's very important to Laurent Township to develop community awareness and support for our program and our fee. So those are some of the benefits that the township commissioners felt would be important establishing this program and eventually establishing, establishing our fee. So here's some rationalization for the formation of our stormwater authority. Uh, law requires development of an authority to enact a fee for first class townships. So first class municipalities cannot just enact the fee without development of an authority. Boroughs and second class townships have different uh, laws and regulations, but we are a first class municipality, so we could not establish our fee without developing our authority. The commissioners can't, can't assess that fee. Um, so municipal authorities can implement stormwater fees to pay for their work, whereas the general tax revenue can be conserved for other municipal needs. So 
the commissioners felt strongly that it was important to develop this authority. So we had a guaranteed source of revenue for these projects and that we assessed every property owner in our municipality. Uh, we, with the establishment of this fee, we can assess uh, tax exempt entities, for example, schools and churches. So they are paying our fee. Um, and um, some of them even have been engaged in installing best management practices. I'll, I'll talk about our credit program later that we established. If you have a BMP, you can be eligible for a credit off of your fee. But um, like I said, the authorities can implement the fees to pay for the work that they need to do. And the general tax revenue can be conserved for our other municipal needs that, that are required in Lower Allen. Also, the long term planning of our projects are, are easier and, and they will be and they are actually, like I said, because there's this guaranteed and dedicated source of revenue for these projects. We're able to budget out uh, plan capital improvement projects, determine what what revenue we have and, and kind of phase those projects kind of in conjunction with our five year permit cycle, um, our MS4 NPDES phase two permit from from DEP. So a little bit about the timeline and how this, this progressed. Uh, the Board of Commissioners actually selected a consultant. Their name was Arcadis, and they performed a stormwater fee study in, in 2018, February of 2018. So they discussed this fee in the fall of 2017, determined they wanted to do it, and then they hired or selected, excuse me, Arcadis to perform this study. Um, a little bit about what Arcadis did for us and, and why this is important for, for Lower Allen is they digitized, we have over 6,000 parcels in our municipality. They digitized those parcels. They took a sampling of residential over 40% and they digitized every commercial parcel in our municipality to determine how much impervious area was on those parcels. Then they, um, then they after they did that, they uh, divided our program budget cost um, to determine the ERU rate, but they also took those 6,000 parcels, divided it by the impervious area and determined our ERU. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, I have a chart, but our ERU ended up being 3,115 square feet per parcel. So that's the average impervious area on one parcel in Lower Allen Township. And then they took that um, amount and divided it by our program budget to determine our ERU rate, which is 19 a quarter. And we have a flat fee for residential and we have a uh, we base the commercial fee off of the impervious area on the property. So we had outreach meetings. That's That was pivotal to the uh, enactment of our fee. Uh, we, it, we had several outreach meetings with the steering committee based uh, of, of residential and commercial property owners. Um, we had three in June of 2018. Uh, and invited those um, property owners, everyone was invited, they were public meetings to be part of the discussion of the fee. Um, and um, a lot of those large property, commercial property owners attended those meetings, which was very important to the educational component of why we were enacting this, we're going to enact this fee. Uh, the Board of Commissioners voted then in July after our outreach meetings and our educational meetings to, to have our township solicitor be, begin the process of forming our authority and establishing, establishing our fee. We held our public hearing to organize the authority. Uh, like I said, first class municipalities have to do this to enact the fee on August 27th of 2018 under the Municipal Authorities Act. And then we passed an ordinance and appointed five members to create and created our articles of incorporation. And that all formed our stormwater authority through the Municipal Authorities Act. The fee was finally completed by Arcadis in 2018. And then the Lower Allen Township Stormwater Authority held our first meeting on October 4th of 2018. And we declared that the Lower Allen Township Stormwater Authority is a financing authority. The township still operates and manages the stormwater system. I'm an employee of the township, but the stormwater authority finances all the projects. So they are um, solely financing, they are not operational. Um, we enacted our fee resolution to enact the fee in December of 2018, and then our first quarterly bills, we, we bill quarterly on a quarterly basis, were mailed um, in April of 2019. That's kind of a long process there, but if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat and I can help answer anything you have about that process. Ooh, sorry. Um, so I talked talk to you about the outreach. Um, not only did we, why this is important is not only did we have that steer, stormwater advisory or steering committee 
But uh, we already had, a, a, we're billing in Lower Allen Township for refuse. We bill for our refuse through Penn Waste. We have an agreement with them and we also bill for public sewer. So what we did is with those quarterly bills, we put information in the, and stuff those in our bills um, two quarters before we enacted the fee to let residents know that we were having public meetings, to let residents know what, what we, that we are going to look at enacting a fee, um, putting email addresses, my email address, uh, the commissioner's contact information if they had questions, that was really important. We put articles in three newsletter articles. We also have a quarterly newsletter prior to enacting the fee. Uh, advertising our meetings, uh, in, informing residents what we were doing, what we were looking at, our program budget. Uh, we had individual mailings. What we really did with that, and I think I talk about it in a little bit, but I'll, I'll touch on it now, is I, I talked about that credit program we offer to residents. We had that credit program in place prior to even enacting the fee. We, we determined what we were going to offer. We offer structural credits off of your fee. If you have a structural BMP that reduces stormwater volume, you are eligible for a credit. And we had that in place and approved in February of 2019 before we even sent the bills out. And then what we did is anybody that had an existing BMP on their property, they were we mailed them a letter explaining what their credit um, would be and how they could apply. And that way they could get their credit in place before they e we even sent the, the bills out. And that was extremely important um, with respect to the outreach we did because those property owners already had that best management practice installed and we felt that was important to let them know that they were eligible for the credit and that they could apply. And I'd say 80% of those individual and commercial property owners applied for that credit and had it in place before we even sent the bills out. We also have a website and we put notifications and information on our website. So we did a lot of public outreach. It was it was a year of public outreach before we even enacted the fee. That helped with the acceptance of the fee. That helped with the educational component of the fee. So those those um, meetings and, and mailers and efforts were extremely important for our, our program. Here's a little bit about our budget. I told you we our CADIS digitized those parcels and determined we determined we have a $1.2 million budget per year. So once they determined how much impervious area and um, and eat what the ERU was, they divided that by the parcels to determine what the ERU rate was per lot. And it's $19 a quarter in Lower Allen Township. And that that um, that amount um, makes up this $1.2 million per year. It's $19 a quarter for residential and it's um, $19 a quarter for every 3,115 square feet for commercial. So it's a multiplier. It's you take every 3,115 square feet of impervious area on a commercial lot and you times that times the $19. But here is what our budget is, is composed of or comprised of, excuse me. It's about 66% is our MS4 compliance with our permit. We have um, operation and maintenance of our stormwater infrastructure, and that's about 23, 27, excuse me, percent. We do street sweeping uh, on a quarterly basis. That's 2.2 percent. We have our admin administration and billing costs and our mailing costs. That's about 3.6 percent. And then the um, legacy transaction costs were, are what we paid Arcadis to do our stormwater fee study. And we chose a, we, we were given two options by Arcadis, a full O&M plan and a um, abridged O&M plan. And we chose full. We wanted to use this fee to assess our, our, our infrastructure, determine what, what's going on with some of our infrastructure that has been in the ground for 60 plus years. So that, that full O&M plan was very important to the township uh, to choose, to, to implement this fee and use the funding to, um, really determine what's going on with some of our aging infrastructure and then also complete our PRP projects. Here's the, the um, flat rate per ERU explanation. So this, I talked about this a little earlier, but our, the, the fee study that Arcadis did determined that our average impervious area, or ERU is what we call it, is 3,115 square feet per lot. So they took, a, like I said, a sampling of 40% of the residential, all the commercial, they digitized or traced each lot over 6,000 lots to, to come up with that average rate. And uh, they divided that by our program budget to determine what the 
quarterly rate would be per ERU, which is 19 a quarter. Why the township chose a flat rate versus a tiered rate? Uh, several reasons. The Board of Commissioners felt it was easier to administer and equitable for all property owners. Um, it reduced minimal cost and effort to implement and oversee compared to tiered rate billing option. Um, and that that's definitely um, a valid statement. It, it is it, it has been less effort to implement than, than if we chose a tiered rate billing option. Um, all property owners benefit from our stormwater system. So because they all benefit from our community-wide community -wide stormwater management system, it, they, they all should play, pay that flat rate. And, and that, that system manages stormwater from our roads and properties. And, and Lower Island Township commissioners felt that all properties in our municipality generate stormwater runoff. Um, it's less likely to be impealed for incorrect impervious area. We've had a minimal amount of stormwater appeals. Um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, our residential customers in Lower Island, they play a, pay a flat rate for sewer and trash already even though the, the amount might differ per lot um, and it will vary, but so the stormwater fee kind of takes a similar approach to that. They pay a flat rate, although different lots might generate more stormwater. Each residential residential ERU plays, pays a flat flat rate. And that kind of, that approach kind of facilitated consistency with our other utilities in our municipality. Um, commercial and non-residential, that would be like apartment buildings that are, um, with parking lots, they pay a fee based upon the number of ERUs of IA on their lot. So, if you know, you, we take how many how many impervious uh, air, area square feet that they have. If they have ten thousand, then they take ten thousand square feet each. You divide that by three thousand one hundred and fifteen to, to determine how many ERUs they have. Let's say they have twenty. You take twenty times the multiplier of nineteen to determine that the, to determine their quarterly fee. Uh, we created this credit and appeals policy in February of 2019. I talked about that earlier, and I will touch on it more here. Uh, that was important because we offered those credits to existing BMP owners. We also had an appeal program in place, and, and that was important because when the fee went out, there was a process for appeals of, of that fee. Um, we drafted the plan and, and policy in-house, and LATSA reviewed the plan, and then um, they approved the policy. We started this process in November of 2018, and it took four, four or five months. Um, there was a lot of work back and forth to determine what the authority wanted to do with respect to uh, what kind of credits they wanted to offer. Um, and like I said, we offer structural uh, BMP credits um, for volume reduction. The township reached out to existing property owners that had the BMPs. Like I said, we encouraged them to apply for a credit prior to enacting the fee. I think this number is a little larger since I did this slide. We I have that we have 64 credits on residential and 20 on commercial. That's to date. Uh, I think it's a little bit higher. Um, and we have received 24 stormwater fee appeals and four of the fee appeals were granted. And uh, for incorrect IA calculations on the commercial properties, we had a, um, a couple properties bring a survey into us and say, look, you have um, more square footage uh, on, our, on our lot than we actually have. And, and those appeals were granted. They had uh, surveyed plans that showed that their IA was slightly different. And it changed their ERUs about one or two, depending on what the, the difference was from what Arcadis digitized. Um, also, this policy kind of, it's really incentivized our property owners to want to install BMPs and to learn about the BMP process because they're now being assessed this fee. And when they come in with projects, they might be putting a pole in, a shed, and they realize that they're they're going to um, um, be assessed, that, or they're already being assessed the seed fee, and they're informed that they can get a credit. They actually, we've had a, a great educational component and process to our program where we've had residential property owners actually installing BMPs on their property. Rain gardens is a common one, infiltration trenches, um, dry wells. We have all sorts of um, residential BMPs that, that the residents choose to install, but it's been a good educational process, and it's actually incentivized those residential property owners to put that credit on. If they manage uh, all of their impervious area with a BMP, they can get a reduction of up to 50% off their fee. So a little bit about our fee billing process. We bill over 6,000 customers quarterly. Um, 
and it, it it's a lot of bills. And we worked, you know, with the finance and engineering departments. I'm in the engineering department, and I had to work with our finance department to determine how we are going to bill this this fee. Are we were we going to bill it separately? Were we going to be putting it on our sewer and refuse bill? And we decided to to put it on our sewer and refuse bill as a third utility. Um, and we, like I said, we had those outreach bill mailers that we did two quarters before we enacted the fee. We have a very low delinquency rate. We actually have less than 1% uh, delinquency rate. We have less than 60 customers that uh, in our municipality that are not paying the fee or are delinquent in their, um, in their stormwater fee. And we do perform the collections in-house and it's an involved process, but we have such a low rate Pretty happy about that. And I think one of the reasons is our outreach. Like I said, I can't stress that enough. It's so important for you to perform outreach when you go through this process, have the public meetings, form steering committees, invite the larger commercial property owners, invite the schools, invite the churches, invite the malls, uh, invite everyone, which we did. Um, not everyone came, but it was important that we had those public meetings to let our residents know what we were doing and, and how we were planning on doing it. And we definitely had input from those property owners when we, when the commissioners chose to enact the flat rate option. So the outreach was acceptant, it was pivotal, pivotal to the initial acceptance of the fee and then the complaints were minimal. Um, a lot of people though did not even know about the fee even though we did all that outreach until the bills went out so then when the bills went out we did get the calls and that that happened for a good two three quarters until um i think most people realized that this was was here to stay so i talked about our pollution reduction plan and the fee is helping us um pay for some of these projects um, that we're doing as part of the we're committed to reducing our PRP is requiring us to reduce 10% of sediment in the next five years of our permit. And we chose to uh, do basin retrofit projects in our municipality. This is one of the projects we did. This is at our public works facility. Uh, we, we have 10 basin retrofit projects that we're doing. Four are on um, land that the township owns and six are on private property. We are in the process of negotiating easements to do those projects with the private property owners. Those private property owners will then get a credit because they're putting in a BMP off of their fees. So it's a win-win. But uh, we um, amended the soils. Here's a little bit about what we did on these projects. We did soil amendment. We um, mixed the soils with compost, uh, took, the, took the existing soil out, screened it, got rid of the um, not so great soil, um, amended the soil, put the soil back into the basin and lifts and then installed native plant species in the basins to help um, pull out that, that sediment and nitrogen and phosphorus from our stormwater runoff. And, and like I said, make our streams cleaner, make the Yellow Breaches watershed cleaner in Lower Island Township. This is uh, another project we did last year. This is at the beginning of a, a residential neighborhood. This is our Sheepford Crossing Basin Retrofit Project. Same thing. We dug out the uh, soil, amended the soil, put the soil back in, put in thousands of plug, native plug plantings. And uh, I don't know if you can see in the left, left frame on your screen, but there's some the coyote decoys in this basin. And one of the unforeseen um, issues we ran to on this project, we, we had some Canadian geese that were attacking the plug plantings and we had to put some coyote decoys in the basin prior to getting our geese protection fencing installed. So um, it was an interesting um, occurrence of events, but the decoys worked and we had them in there for about a week and a half until we got the, the netting installed to keep the geese out of the basin. Uh, some of the additional projects we're using our fee for, we have, uh, I talked about this a little earlier, we have TV projects. We have stormwater ponding in two areas of our township. Um, we got quotes through CoStars for flushing and TV of the line. <clears throat> We're looking at lining the pipes later this year and in, in 
to we're really actually going to double the capacity in these areas. The pipes are in pretty decent shape. We're going to line them. We're going to replace inlets. Some of the inlets are extremely small. They are limiting limiting the amount of stormwater runoff can, that can get into them. Some of them are old brick inlets from 1950s that the bricks are caved in. We got all that debris out and we are going to be doing some lining and inlet replacement here this fall. And we're trying to pair that with our paving projects. That way we rip the road up once. Uh, so we, we work really well in our engineering department. We, we televise, we get the data back, we determine what we're gonna do, and then ne the next year we'll pave. So it's kind of a, a smooth process in our municipality and we're not cutting and ripping the road up two times within two years or three years. And we're also looking, um, I don't have this on the slide, but also uh, here in August, we're gonna TV another 11,000 linear feet of pipe um, where we, we kind of have some unknown areas. We have some sinkholes, we have uh, some additional ponding in our municipality and we're gonna TV that and determine what the next project is that we're gonna do for, for lining and, and replacement of inlets. <clears throat> some of those PRP projects that I talked about, um, we've applied for grants um, and we've been awarded grants through DEP um, and NIFWF. Um, we've actually have five grants to date for over a half million dollars. Um, the Moreland project we're, bit, we're constructing right now, we, we received a NIFWF grant of $160,000 to retrofit that basin. So we've got actually three basins constructed and two more con to, to be constructed this year. <clears throat> So what do we wanna accomplish next? Um, we've got actually seven more additional PRP projects to complete, not eight. We've got one under construction right now. We are gonna do um, water sampling and we have appendices in our PRP, appendix B and C, and uh, we had uh, part of that, our permit requirements are to determine the areas, the storm sewer sheds of our township that drain to those um, drain to those areas where the um, pollutants are. DEPs um, has stated that we have two pollutants in our, our municipality, pathogens and priority organic compounds. So we had to map the storm sewer sheds that drain to those areas and give a list of known or suspected sources of pollutants. And then we're performing voluntarily, actually, it's not required, but we're performing water sampling to determine if those pollutants are indeed actually in the water coming from those suspected sources. We don't have known at this point, we have suspected. And then we have to, um, part of the permit requires us to determine BMPs to mitigate those pollutants if they are found. So that's what we're doing right now. Uh, we're doing that this summer. We have an ordinance revision we're doing this fall uh, that's required by our permit. <clears throat> like I said, we're doing stormwater infrastructure repair and replacement. We coordinate that with our paving. Uh, it's a smooth process and the residents really appreciate that, um, that we don't have their road blocked up and ripped, ripped up in two, three times in, in you know, two, two years. We uh, have a GI, our, our stormwater infrastructure is mapped on our GIS system, but we are updating our mapping, constantly updating our mapping. We have a GPS unit. We might find an additional outfall. We might eliminate an outfall. We might uh, determine that we want to change our inlet numbering system. We are constantly updating our GIS program mapping, and we are also creating story maps of our, B our PRP projects through GIS, and we put them on our website, and that educates our residents uh, on our projects and the construction and what we're doing with the fees. So we're hoping to put a story map on this fall after we do the um, television, or excuse me, the, um, the slip lining of the stormwater pipes and the inlet replacement. So and we're also going to create a story map of the water sampling that we're going to do this summer. So those are some of the next steps with our, our fee and what we're, we're planning to do in Lower Island Township. And that's all I have. Great. Thank you so much. I, sure. I love Did I presentation. come in time? Did I come in? Yeah, time? you're okay. <laughs> We have until 11.20, which means we okay. have about nine minutes for questions. If anybody has any for Rebecca, feel free to drop them into the chat. I love hearing about all of the outreach component and the amount of time you all dedicated to that as an outreach specialist that rings true to me that you know you have to do so much pre-work. I did have a question for you. I want to just clarify a statement that you made that once the bills went out, you did get some calls. So 
I mean, I, I'm assuming the rate at which you got angry calls was a lot lower because of all the work that you had done, um, that year's worth of investment in outreach. Some of the calls that you received were those people that were unaware of it, that were disgruntled with the cost of it. Like, what were the nature of those calls that you received once the bill started going out? Yeah, uh, I would have to tell you that a majority of them were totally unaware, even though we did all the outreach that we did. Mm -hmm. um, one of the one of the uh, other components that we have in Laurent Touch, we have like a call system. It's an emergency system that residents can opt in. And if we have a snow emergency or there's a flood emergency, we put emails, text messages or calls out to people. So we also pushed this through that. And even with doing that and you heard all the outreach we did, we still had some uh, residents call here that, and, and they were totally unaware. They, they didn't even understand the charge on their bill. So yeah, there was some people that just, they, they, they did not read, read our outreach publications and our efforts. And there were some people that were upset, um, about the fee. Uh, but what happened with those calls is once we started to explain why we were assessing the fee, uh, and not raising taxes that the commissioners could have chosen to raise taxes and they didn't, they, they assessed the fee because they could reach every parcel in the municipality, you know, tax exempt entities, if they raise taxes, wouldn't pay. Once I explained the, the reason why we were assessing the fee, um, some of those individuals came around. So it was, it was, um, it was a busy couple quarters here in Lower Helen Township in 2019 for sure. And were you fielding all of those calls on your own or did you have a team set up to kind of address those calls? Uh, that was mainly me. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was busy for, I mean, I've been pretty busy, but that was a busy, busy time with my phone ringing off the hook. Um, so I, like I said, the first quarter was was pretty um, pretty steady with phone calls. The second quarter a little bit, and then it started to dwindle off. Nice. So mm -hmm. definitely plan on long hours once it goes into effect. Well, we have another question. What type of sediment reduction do you get for basin retrofit toward your PRP? Well, it it depends on on the project. So let me just get this chart, and I'll I'll explain that a little bit. Let me find this in my. It depends on how much area is going to the PRP, to that project, okay? So let me just give you, we have 10 of them. So one of the base, so the, the public works basin that I showed you, um, that re is reducing 11,000 pounds of sediment a year. Uh, the Sheepford West Basin is 15,000 pounds a year. The Moreland Basin, which we're constructing now is 13,000 pounds a year. Our total reductions, excuse me, I'm sorry for the cough. Once our 10 projects are in, we'll be uh, achieving a 13 or 317,000 pound reduction of sediment a year to meet our program goal, uh, requirements through our PRP. So it really depends on how much impervious area, excuse me, I just took a drink of water, and impervious area are going to that basin. You determine the drainage area, and then we have, we used, um, <clears throat> guidance from the Chesapeake Stormwater Network. They have an efficiency table that determines how much sediment can be reduced depending on the size of the drainage area. And that's that's um, a little bit about our projects. <laughs> Excuse me, also, our PRP is up on our website. You're welcome to go to Lower Allen Township, www.latwp.org. You can kind of check out some of those uh, um, equations and, and um, numbers that I was just discussing, if you want to look at that further. So, Rebecca, we have another outreach question. Yes. Um, and you got a thumbs up for the answer you just provided. <laughs> it says, great job on being so proactive on the outreach and education. Was there any particular sector that pushed back in the outreach process? And if so, how did you approach that? Um, yes. Uh, we had two, we have two large churches in our municipality that really pushed back um, on the fee, but one of them in particular has the best management practice and they're getting, they're getting a 50% reduction. So that was helpful um, because they, once we educated them on the fact that they spent the money to install this BMP and that they were going to get a reduction in their fee, they were pretty happy because their fee is 11,000 a quarter, <coughs> excuse me. So they reduced their fee in half. Uh, 
I don't know if you know the Capital City Mall. That was another player in our municipality that was not extremely happy. But what that's done with the mall is they've had this huge parking area. And now they're looking at how they can put some islands and maybe potentially pervious payment, pavement in there to reduce their fee. Their fee is also very high a quarter, very, very high. So were they upset with us at first? Absolutely. Did they come around and determine that they might be able to have an impact environmentally on our program and, and actually do something positive uh, for their property? Yes. So the, the meetings ended up being fairly positive. I can't say everyone walked out, you know, smiling and, you know, with bells and whistles, but uh, honestly, after the meetings, they, they weren't coming back with pitchforks by any means. <laughs> so well, um, and Rebecca, are they able to get any sort of like grant funding to help them defray the costs of putting in the BMPs that they would can then credit? They can apply for that. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yep. They can. There's certain grants. Now, not all grants go for private property, but there's some programs that are that they might be eligible. And what, what I was trying to encourage a lot of these people to do is do a cost analysis and determine what the BMP is going to cost, determine what your reduction is, and it might pay for itself in a year. It might pay for itself in two years, right? So do that cost analysis, see what the what your BMP is going to cost to install. And if you're getting 50% reduction, in two years, the BMP actually pays for itself on some of these properties. Some of them, the mall, it'll pay for itself in a year. Do you so, give them tools to do that analysis? What kind of technical assistance are you providing them to help them figure out their credits? We help. Um, oh, yeah, we will figure out their credit for it. We can determine. And, and what those letters I did when we mailed them at the beginning is people who already had them. We determined how much impervious area they were reducing. And if they come to us and say, what if we put this in? We can determine if they reduce you know, if they only want to manage half their parking lot, okay, then you're going to get a 25% credit. We'll work with them and, and educate them on how they can maximize the credit and then give, we can't, we can't actually recommend people to install the BMPs, but we can give them a list of people that have worked with the township before. We, we aren't allowed to recommend specific contractors, but we do kind of guide them through that process. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a really helpful part because I think a lot of times they don't have, you know, the technical capabilities to even figure out how to go about getting a credit. Yes. So I know in municipalities yep. I've worked in, they've really like tried to get sort of like a predetermination, right? Yep. Just an idea of will this fly? Yep. And they'll come in and meet with us, sit down, and we'll talk about what our program offers and how we can help them. So we, we will do that with, with anybody. We've done that even with COVID, we were doing that over Zoom. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm-hmm. Anybody else have any questions for Rebecca? We're at 919. We got one more minute. And if you don't have a question, use your emojis to show Rebecca some appreciation for her time and expertise today. We're so grateful that you came back and joined us for this. And uh, I think it's a really instructive case study for everyone to learn from, especially with that emphasis on outreach. So you're getting some applause. So thanks so much for Thank being you. here, everyone. So we're going to go back, I believe, to the plenary. Adriana, correct me if I'm wrong. I should have my. Yeah, that's correct. We're going to hit the leave button and we're going to go back to a plenary session on PRPs and then a um, a case study on a joint PRP. So we're everyone's going to go to the plenary and then we'll go back into um, some breakout sessions a little bit later this morning. All right. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. Hit your leave button and we'll see you back in the plenary. Thank you.